Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. So CES is in full swing and Nvidia has made some announcements at the beginning now of CES. Particularly of interest for us today is the new super refresh of the 40 series. Now that then leads to the question, if you're in the market for a new GPU, do you go for a super, a TI, just the vanilla one, a vanilla one in the next range up and so on. These names can sometimes be a bit confusing. So let's try to break it down. Let's try to understand Nvidia's new 40 series super refresh. So Nvidia often releases a super refresh of its graphics cards with the notable exception of the 30 series. So for example, the RTX 20 series came out in the Q4, the latter part of 2018, and a super refresh happened about nine months later uh, during Q3 of 2019. So Nvidia just announced now the super refresh of the 40 series. This includes the GeForce RTX 4080 Super and the GeForce RTX 4070 Super. This means now there are up to three variants of some of the uh, 40 series cards. So for example, there's the vanilla GeForce RTX 4070. Then there's the titanium version of the RTX 4070 called the RTX 4070 Ti or Ti. And now there is the super version. So you've got the GeForce RTX 4070 Super. So which is better, the TI or the Super? Well, let's dive in a bit more. Now, Nvidia have a whole range of graphics cards and uh, each generation changes what's called the microarchitecture. That's the internal design of the GPU that processes all of those graphics requests. And of course, the, uh, the programmable requests for the CUDA cores, the AI acceleration and so on. And so for example, if you look here at the GTX 16 series and the RTX 20 series, they're based on the Turing architecture. However, the RTX distinguishes itself from the 16 series and then it has these ray tracing cores and these tensor AI cores. Now the 30 series uses the Ampere architecture. It has the next generation of the ray tracing cores, the next generation of the AI cores, and now we're into the RTX 40 series based on the Ada Lovelace uh, architecture, and it's got the latest versions of all of those things. So as each year goes past, you get a better version of the GPU, better performance, uh, able to do much more. And as I've said, each series can get updated with a super version. A couple of other things just to notice about the different versions, and I was particularly looking here at the video encode and decode. So you've got the uh, NVIDIA hardware encode and decode. You've got the AV1 hardware uh, video encode and decode, and also which CUDA version, DirectX 12 version. So the thing to look is here is that there's AV1 encode on the RTX 30 series, AV1 decode on the 30 and the 40 series, and then you've got these upgoing generations of both the encoders for the you know H.264, H.265, and also the CUDA stuff. So there are differences more than just performance with each generation. You get other features as well. Okay, so let's look quickly at the RTX 20 series to look at what happened then when there was a super refresh. And you'll see quickly here there's an RTX 2080 Super, 2070 Super, and a 2060 Super. So let's just look at the 2070 Super. So for example, this is the number we're looking at here, the number of CUDA cores. Now basically with a GPU, it does everything in parallel. So as well as the actual micro architecture changes, so each core is able to do what it needs to do better and faster, the more cores you have, the better the graphics card is going to be. And this basically correlates to the frame rates you're going to get in games. Now there are some differences, there are different uh, minor aspects, but basically the more cores you cop, the better it's going to be. And as you look across the range here, you can see that the number of cores grows. So the RTX 2080 Ti is 4,000 and something cores, and down here you've got 2,000, so half the number of cores. So the RTX 2070 had 2,304 cores, whereas the Super Refresh had 2,560 cores. So it's going to be a faster processor in terms of what it can do graphics-wise because it's got more cores. Now, there are other things that happen here. For example, there's a quite a little bump here in the boost clock speed and a little bump here in the base clock speed. So those are going to make differences as well. Of course they will, but the biggest difference here is just simply the number of cores. And then you also get other things like how much memory it can have in it. And for example, in this case, it remained at 8 gigabytes. So the Super is definitely better than the vanilla one. But if we look over at the uh, RTX 
RTX 2080. Then we can see here that you've got 2,144 cores in the vanilla one, 3,072 cores in the super one, so a, a minor update there, and then 4,352 cores in the TI, the titanium version. So clearly the TI version is better than the super version, and that's why NVIDIA lists them in this order. And then, but to compensate that, as I said, you've got this clock speed, so 1.8 here, compared to 1.64 here, 1.65, 1.35. So you're gonna have more cores, slightly lower clocked, uh, you know, and that's just the balance that they get. Also, as I said, notice here that there's more memory available and a greater uh, memory interface, a wider memory interface. That means you can get the data in and out of that graphics card faster. So these are the combinations. These all play out, as I say, in game tests in how many frames per second you're gonna get. But there is really a very strong correlation between the number of cores and then secondarily the uh, clock speed. So what we know from the 20 series is that the Super is in the middle between the vanilla and the titanium version. Now, when we look at the new 40 series, including the Super Refresh, we can see here we've got the RTX 4080 Super, we've got the RTX 4070 Super, and so looking at the RTX line again, 5,888 CUDA cores for the 4070, 7,168 for the Super, 7,680 for the Titanium version. So again, Super is in the middle between the vanilla and the Titanium one. As I said before, difference here in clock speed, for example, the base clock is 1.98, slightly higher than the vanilla one, but lower than the Titanium one. Uh, and also here we can see that the uh, 12 gigabytes uh, maximum memory there. If we go over to the RTX Super, again, 9,728 cores compared to 10,240, so boosting the number of cores, uh, higher clock speed, uh, and again, that's say 16 gigs of memory. So you need to choose, when you're buying a graphics card, you need to choose which do you want, the 4060, the 4070, the 4080, the 4090, because of price differences. And as you can look here, the 49, 16,000, so way, way more cores. And then whether you want the vanilla, the titanium, or the super, again, price is a difference. And of course, the uh, performance you're gonna get. But one more thing, now with the 40 series super refresh, there are sometimes four variants of the car. So not only do you get the vanilla, the GeForce RTX 4070, the titanium, the GeForce RT, RTX 4070 Ti, you get the super, the RTX 4070 super, now there is the titanium super. So you get the GeForce RTX 4070 Ti super. So let's look at that in the list here. So now there are four RTX 4070 cards. 5,888, 7,168, 7,888, and now 8,448 with a slightly higher clock speed, especially compared here to the vanilla RTX 4080, but still less cores than the vanilla one. So it really is gonna be, see how these turn out in frame rates. My guess will be, is that still the RTX 4080 comes uh, in top, but now you do have this extra version of the 4070, the 4070 Ti Super, Titanium Super, and notice here it can also give you 16 gigs of bytes of RAM, just like the RTX 4080, and they've got 256-bit memory bandwidth compared to the 128-bit one for the lower one. So you've now got even more choice which one you're gonna want to pick. As I said, price is a factor, the performance, we'll see what the frame rate tests are in all the popular games, but this is basically what you're getting. The, the RTX 4070 Ti Super has got the most number of cores and the most memory and the better bandwidth for the, all of the RTX 4070 graphics cards. So in order of performance, you have a vanilla one. So for example, the GeForce RTX 4070, you get the super version, the GeForce RTX 4070 Super. Then if you've got more money and, and you can got more you can do, then you have the titanium version, so the GeForce RTX 4070 Ti. And then if you really wanna stick to the top end of that particular range, so remember you got the 4080 and the 4090 after this, but in the 4070, you've got the RTX 4070 Ti Super. Okay, so there you go. I hope that helped you understood what you're getting, what those different letters mean, what the refresh means. Uh, again, it all comes down to budget. How much money do you have? What can you afford to spend? And then what are you getting for that, depending on the different levels, the different uh, versions of each of those graphics cards. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.